Andrew and Anorna Thomas are on a rescue mission. They're coming to the stunning Pembrokeshire coast to convert this old stable block into their dream home and to save the family farm by turning these derelict outbuildings into luxury holiday lets. We've basically got three builds on the go at the same time here. It's a huge amount of work. But no experience, a tight budget and a six-month deadline means a punishing schedule. You sit down and you just think, why on earth am I doing this? Because before life was easy. Ever since Andrew and Anona met 11 years ago, they've shared a dream of one day returning to live on the rural Pembrokeshire coast where they both grew up. But because Anona's parents were struggling to make money from the family farm, they've now decided to move back and save it. This means leaving behind their suburban Surrey home to build their new life on the farm in Nevin, 120 miles from Cardiff. Anona's dad has given them this disused stable block to turn into their dream home. And they'll also be converting this derelict milking parlour into two luxury holiday lets to bring in money and help save her parents' farm. And so what made you decide to, if you like, come back home at this stage of your lives? Well, um, my, bro my brother died three years ago. Oh, really? So um, we decided we'd come back and support my parents and be close to Andrew's parents as well. Mm. Um, just to give them more support really because yeah. it's been quite a hard few years. We'd always, we'd always thought of moving back one day but probably about a few years down the line really. Yes. We love the area, we both love the area yeah. and you know, we've, I've been given the opportunity to build a little bit of a business for ourselves mm. here as well now. The farm's got so many memories for me especially so um, I'm quite, you know, we're not farmers so we want to keep the farm so we thought this was one way of diversifying. Before his tragic death in a car accident, Anona's brother Carwin ran the 160-acre farm with his father, Glyn. Glyn now struggles to cope alone. We've uh, really cut down now in the last uh, few years. Uh, we used to have quite, quite a bit more cattle. We haven't got the help now that we used to have. I'm not sure what to do, really. Uh, maybe we'll... Uh, do away with all the cattle, I'm not sure, because it's uh, getting a little hard on our own like this. Glyn's hopes now rest with Andrew and Anona's plans for these old buildings. So this is it. Tell me what you've got here. Well, we've got um, an old stable. Yeah. Which is this. Which is this one this here. This building. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do with that? Well, the stable's going to become our home. Uh, eventually. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful it. building, isn't it? It is a lovely building. A lot yeah. of character. It is. And what are your plans for the monk parlour? They're going to be two, uh, a two-bedroom cottage this side. Two-bedroom here. And then a three-bedroom cottage down, down the end. Well, Lots they need a do. fair bit of work, these, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. So shall we go and have a look? Yeah. yeah. This 90-year-old stable block is to be their luxury new home. Breaking with convention, the three bedrooms and bathrooms are to be on the lower level. Upstairs will be an open-plan kitchen and living area with magnificent views of the countryside. But first, they're going to convert this Victorian milking shed into two stone cottages. One with two bedrooms, the other extended to give three. At their heart will be a wood-burning stove. A mezzanine level is also being added to provide extra sleeping space. Work on the holiday lets is already underway. The slate roof's been stripped back to the original timbers and the mammoth job of repointing the stone walls has started. And I love the walls. I mean, completely different to any new build house. You've got, you've got all this wonderful stonework. Yeah. Beautiful, built of every material. You've got some, like, you've got slate in there, you've got brick in there, you've got stone and then the lime mortar. This is incredibly brittle. Yeah. If you get rainwater running through that wall, all that lime mortar will just crack, yeah. split up, and the wall will just collapse. So when do you hope to have the new roof on? Hopefully within the month. You've got to get that roof yeah. on oh, yeah. and this building dry yeah. before the weather gets yeah. really bad. Exactly. 
After the cottages are completed, the couple can begin the exciting challenge of converting the stable block. Wow. This is going to be your future home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, we are knee deep in shit in here. Yeah. <laughs> Can you actually imagine this being your home when it's in this state? It's quite difficult to imagine yeah. at the moment, yeah. This is fantastic. I mean, to be in a proper yeah. working farm building like this. Yeah. What a transformation it's going to be. When it you would finish. be huge, you know, when it's done. I'm so relieved to hear Andrew and Anona aren't tackling this challenging build alone. They've sold their Surrey home and raided their savings to hire local builder Tony James. To keep costs down, policeman Andrew plans to labour for Tony, but only part-time, as he'll be splitting his time between Wales and London. So why are you not going to be here full-time? I don't want to leave my job in London, because it's, it's a job I love. And also we need some income coming in while we're doing the work. And is money tight? We have got a budget. We're pretty much sure that... We'll, it's a realistic... It's yeah. a realistic budget and we'll come in... Do you want to tell me what it is? I'll let you know if it's realistic or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've budgeted 100,000 for the cottages. Right. And about 60 to 70,000 for the stable. So that's mm. what we're it's looking at, roughly. It's not bad. Mm. It's not bad. It's just there's that awful unknown about all yeah. buildings. Yeah. Mm. What are you going to find as yeah. you're going through it? Yeah. How Absolutely. much is this building going to crumble away? Mm. Yeah. Mm. What as are the unknowns? We've stripped it back to its bare bones. I, I think any nightmare should have emerged by now. This is a build that's difficult to put a budget or time restraint on, but the couple hope to start letting the cottages at Easter, just six months away. You've got to admire Andrew and Anona's courage and determination in breathing new life into this farm. But with no building experience, they're renovating two old outbuildings and opening a holiday cottage business. If that wasn't tough enough, they're going to try and do all of that while holding down two full-time jobs. I just hope they can pull it off. Andrew and Anona Thomas have made a life-changing decision to return home to the Pembrokeshire coast, where they both grew up. With her parents struggling to make ends meet, the family farm is under threat. They're converting these derelict farm buildings into their new home and two holiday cottages, which they hope will bring much-needed income to the farm and keep it in the family for generations to come. It's, it's, you know, it's quite emotional for me, um, knowing that we're still going to have the farm and not going to sell it, and because um, this is home for me. They have six months to finish the build if they're to hit their Easter deadline for letting. The couple both want to continue their careers and are putting their faith in builder Tony James to complete this massive and potentially fraught renovation on schedule. Tony, how are you, mate? Good morning to you. Mr. Builder. Mr. Builder, yes. So you're responsible for looking after these plans and building this building at I least. sincerely hope so. What, what do you think are going to be the biggest problems for you during this build? Hmm, trying to keep the character trying to keep as much stonework up as we can. Once you delve into these old buildings, they can fill you full of surprises every day. Touch one stone and half a wall can be done. Really? Mm, especially these ones, they look a bit interesting. Andrew and Anona are confident their 160,000 pounds will be enough for the project. But Tony's worries about the condition of the buildings means he won't give a price for the job. He's charging them a daily rate. But the scary thing for a client is they don't know how much it's going to cost them at the end. That's very true. It's going to cost them what it's going to cost them. You can't fix price it. Well, I could, but I mean, within the first week, I'm sure I would have found something I could have said was an extra. The first stage for Tony's team is to dig foundations for an extension to create an extra bedroom for one of the cottages. After the cottages are finished, the builders will start on the couple's new home. To keep labouring costs down, Andrew's clearing out the old stables himself in preparation for the build. You need as many hands as you can get, I think, on this. Oh, oh definitely, yeah. And, uh, and you look at the amount of stuff in here. Um, this has all been sitting here for bloody years. Yeah, this has, yeah. I mean, uh, so once this is cleared out, we've got to clear out downstairs, take out all the old feeding bays, um, take up the floor that's down there. 
which is all old agricultural tiles and everything. And, uh, and then start sort of uh, planning the next steps, really, with the floor and everything else. Then after two weeks hard labouring in Wales, Andrew does the five-hour drive back to London, where he has to squeeze four weeks' work into two into another physically demanding job as a public order instructor for the Met Police. It's pretty tiring. Our department, we, we're on a call-out for, for any protesters or any people who get onto roofs or cranes or important buildings in London, such as, I don't know, Buckingham Palace, the London Eye, uh, Houses of Parliament. So that's quite exciting when you're, when you're climbing up the London Eye and uh, dealing with people like that. Anona's living in Wales, working locally and living with her parents, Glyn and Nesta, in the house where she and her late brother grew up. There we are. Come, come and have a cup of tea. Oh, lovely. But you, you must be incredibly pleased after what your family has been through to now have Anona coming back home. I'm very thrilled, yes. Because at one time I thought, we thought we'd have to give up. That was the problem when, when we, three years ago, we had... Um, we lost our son, Carwin, Anona's brother. And at the time, I, Nesta and I were grieving very badly. And it was so bleak. You know, we, we thought um, the bottom of, of our world had fallen out. And um, we, we thought we'd have to sell the farm. And that was really upsetting. Now the future of the farm rests with Andrew and Anona's project to convert the old milking shed into luxury holiday lets, while retaining as much of the building's original character as possible. The first job was getting a roof on the 150-year-old building to protect the stonework. But there's bad news. Every timber in the 100-feet-long roof is rotten and needs replacing. A costly blow to the project. But as if a huge building project wasn't enough, and with her husband away two weeks in every four, Anona is also doing a challenging job, setting up a new nursery. Starting a new job, doing all the renovations, which is all new as well, it's quite monumental sort of stuff, really. Um, it can be quite a strain and quite, quite worrying at times. I think when Andrew's away, I have so many things going on there and so many things going on here. It's, it's, it's definitely quite a, a bit of pressure then, you know. And I'm quite glad when he comes home to uh, take over the helm as such. With Andrew away and Anona in her new job, they rely more and more on Builder Tony to keep on top of the project. I thought I'd better come and tell you yeah. that all the wood's turned up today. Oh, good. So the roof's going to go on next week now. We'll good. have the roof done in seven yeah. days, so we shouldn't be... So we're on schedule, really. Good. Well, yes. fingers crossed. But autumn turns to winter, and the ten days Tony estimated for the roof turns into four weeks. And still, the job's not finished. I think the weather has been a major factor because it has been very wet and very cold here over the last couple of weeks. It's been surprising. But more than the weather, the old buildings have caused problems, as Tony feared they would. We stripped the original, all the original roofs come off. We found out that the whole building was about a foot at a level, which we thought it was a little bit, but we didn't realise it was a foot. So we had to take off a lot of the wall on the top side so that we could put the roof back level. To support the new roof, the builders have fitted over 100 feet of steel joists. Next, the wooden rafters are being cut to length and slotted into place. 164 rafters when we finish. The it's carpenter's telling me that uh, this is the longest roof we've done. It looks more like a building, like a house now, yes. That's it then. And then we've got to hope that the roof turns up. As promised, that we can get it covered in by Christmas. Well, the roof does come. And thanks to his and Tony's hard work, the huge new roof is tiled by Christmas. So Andrew and Anona still have a fighting chance of finishing the holiday cottages for Easter.
With the roof on, the interior conversion work on the two cottages can begin. Erecting walls and lining the roof for the mezzanine level. For the duration of the build, Andrew's negotiated a special work schedule with his employers. It means cramming in up to two exhausting 70-hour weeks in London every month. Then it's back to Wales for two weeks of hard graft on his new home. Yeah, a lot of it I will be doing on my own while the builders are just uh, carrying on with the cottages. It's going to take, um, yeah, probably a few weeks to actually uh, clear all the timber out, uh, lift up all these old floor tiles. Um, and then once we've done that, we need to make new openings in here as well and get them all sorted out, chip all the old stuff off the walls, clean the walls up and also then put the new slab back in and float it through. So, yeah, I think it will, uh, it will be quite tiring. Probably going to be here from sort of 8 in the morning till, you know, 7 or 8 at night. Andrew's also got to make time for planning meetings with Anona and Tony. Would you be able to build something into these walls? as well as buying all the materials for the build. One is 13. 13 long, yeah. If he had time, he'd also love to help Anona's parents more around the farm. At the moment, Glyn has to look after his 160 cattle and 160 sheep alone. Me and Anona do worry about, about Glyn and Esther quite a lot because, you know, they have got a hard life here. You know, they're on the farm, you know, working the farm sort of all day long. For two people who are now sort of um, in their 60s, it's it's not easy. And hopefully, once all you know, all the bills are done and everything else, we can find a way, to sort of, hopefully, to work together and you know, make the burden a little bit less on them um, as far as everything they've got to do goes. To bring in as much money to the farm as possible, Andrew and Anona want to achieve the highest rating for the two holiday cottages. The couple believe retaining the original stonework is essential to this ambition, but it's a long and costly job. Two skilled stonemasons have been working constantly for two months, painstakingly repointing the stone walls. You can't put a time limit on how long the job's going to take with these jobs because it's so fiddly, like, you know. But we're trying to show, I suppose, as much stone as possible to, to make it look good and to keep it waterproof as well, you know, to keep it as authentic as possible. Eh? Wow. <laughs> Look at that. And there is a build that's moving forward. Andrew, oh. how you doing, mate? Hi, George. Are you well? Good yeah, to see good. you. Yeah, good. Not too bad. This is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. It's good to see it all sort of coming together now, so... Let's have a look inside and see, yeah, uh, definitely. see how the work's going in there. The holiday cottages are really taking shape, and Andrew should be proud. Wow. I yes, can't believe uh, how much it's moving on. It's come on a bit, isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, the, all of the stonework itself is, was quite beautiful. But yeah. The, the, all of this mortar that they've redone. Here we are. So well crafted. And all the stones that they need to rebuild have come from the fields. So they've had to go out and actually find the stones to put back in. And That's brilliant. I mean, the whole building was built with stones from the fields when it was originally built. Yeah. So they've matched up the stones by getting it from the field. Uh, the extension bit by here is going to be a bedroom. That's yep. going to be the master bedroom with an ensuite running off it. And that's going quite well. You've got all the timber framing up there at the back. Yeah, and that's then... all going to be clad with oak boarding outside. This is the main living area. Wow. So you've got open plan, <laughs> living area. <laughs> this is great, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic, yeah. Wow. You're going to have a wood-burning stove coming down, sitting about here. The kitchen running across that wall there, yeah. in, the back, in a little L shape and the old mezzanine level above there, which will be just a bit of a reading area with a sofa bed. I love the idea that up there in the roof space amongst the rafters, mm. you've got skylights to get beautiful views out across the countryside. Yeah. But it's actually a, just a, a wonderful, cosy little snug area. Yeah. As Easter looms, Andrew is back in Wales after two more 70-hour weeks. After three months of building works, combined with his relentless schedule, he's in no doubt about the enormity of the challenge they've taken on. We've basically got three builds on the go at the same time here. It's a huge amount of work. It's sort of more work than 
than I ever imagined it would be. You know, me and Anona have spent the last sort of two years of our lives really getting all the permissions and getting all the builders organised and everything we need for the build to get it here. And then once it starts, it's just even busier. It's just, it's just madness. I've been finding it a few nights quite hard to sleep, you know, just we're talking about the building before going to bed and uh, that sort of goes round and round in my head and the new job, that's going round and round in my head. So, yeah, it can be quite tricky to sleep at times. Andrew's now doing the job of knocking the old mortar out of the walls of the stables. It's work, 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 and hard physical work at that. Since we've moved back, we haven't really had time to appreciate and enjoy the beaches and the scenery and everything else and the walks and everything that we'd like to do. Um, because by the time we finish at night, we're so tired. It's just a bit of food and then, um, and then bedtime. Really. He's trying to keep costs down by doing as much labouring on the stables himself as possible. Tony and his crew will start on their home when they finish the holiday cottages. If he is holding this up, then we'll just move on and just take over. We'll just walk over him and carry on. I don't think he'll mind that much, because he's more important for him to get in his house than it is to save a few quid, I would think, at the end of the day. Hopefully, he'll, well, he will see sets. But money's getting tight. The cost of the holiday lets has gone above the £100,000 they'd budgeted for and has been eating away at the 60 grand they'd set aside for their own home. We had no idea the stonework would take so long and there's been a huge amount of work in that. And, you know, really, we've, you know, we've been paying two guys permanently for three months just, so, yeah. just to do stonework at the moment. We had the dream of these two holiday cottages and our stable, the house for us, and being mortgage-free. We had a figure in mind, didn't we, for, for both cottages, give or take 10%, and I think we're probably going to be... Over that, aren't we? Predicting. Probably about 30% above what we'd predicted originally for the costs. Andrew and Anona's dream of being mortgage-free is slipping away from them, and their Easter deadline for the holiday lets is now looking almost impossible to meet. Andrew and Anona Thomas's mission to build their dream home and save the family farm from going under has hit problems. The couple's bold plan to generate vital new income by converting this old milking shed into two luxury holiday cottages is now behind schedule. And the builders haven't even started on their new home. It's a huge amount of work. It's sort of more work than, than I ever imagined it would be. Their ambitious deadline for letting the cottages at Easter has been and gone. Accepting paying guests is a long way off, and they're £30,000 over budget. Despite the delays and setbacks, the holiday cottages have come on a lot in the last two months. Wow, what a difference. Yeah, yeah. Since the last time I was here. Yeah, it's changed a little bit, hasn't it? The one thing I can't quite get my head around is how you get up to that metanine. Yeah, neither have we yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> we honestly didn't, didn't think about it until, obviously, when it was there. We, we started to think, well, how are we going to get up there? And <laughs> there was nothing on the, <laughs> nothing on the plans to, uh, to, um, to tell us how to get up there. So, you had a word with your architect, mate. Uh, yeah. Probably. Got them to sort that out. If we realised we'd have problems getting up there, then just not add the mezzanine at all. And it would have saved us a load of money as well, really. Yeah, a whole saved load. you money, a whole saved load. you time. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, there's no quick fix. Using a ladder for access is against health and safety laws, and there's no way the mezzanine can be used for guests. Not only have they wasted money building it, it's likely to mean less potential rental income. This is money they can't afford to lose, giving their mounting costs and high standards for the build. How much do you think it's cost you extra just on that stonework? I would, I would reckon it's probably cost us probably around 30 grand just on the stonework. So 30 grand just on labour and then on top of that material? Mm, probably, yeah, just for the stonework. Yeah. Wow. We'd have liked to have done it, as I've said before, all without a mortgage. Mm. Um, but we are going to have to have a little bit of a mortgage on it. You don't mind me asking, how much would that mortgage be? How much are you having to borrow now? We're probably looking to borrow about 60,000. 60,000? 60, yeah. 
No, it's here a bit. It's carnage, isn't it? Yeah, you could say that. An absolute yeah. building site. After next week, all the utilities, all these drains and everything will be done and in, so we can fill the trenches back up, and then we can start having a bit of a clear up here. So basically, until all the building work is completely finished out here, all the ground works, yeah. you can't let those properties out. Uh, definitely not this one, yeah. uh, but this one may be. Maybe. Maybe once we've got the front sorted. Andrew estimates it'll be another six weeks before the cottages are finished, but even then I worry they'll struggle to let them, given the disruption caused by building work on their new home. And until that's finished, the couple will have to remain cooped up, living with Anona's parents. It's been a year now since we've had our own home, and since then we've, we've been in limbo, really, haven't we? We've mm. been living out of bags and, you know... And friends and... Friends and, you know, with your mum and dad, mm. and we've not had our own space as such, have we? That just sort of frustrates us, doesn't mm. it, really? Moving into the stable is really special, so... We just want to get on with it, and just having this... Mm. These few weeks now, it's just, it's just hard again, yeah. isn't it, you know? Despite all the stresses of the build, the couple are starting to appreciate the benefits of being back by the coast where they both grew up. And their thoughts are turning increasingly to the future. It's just the scenery, the, the sea, the beaches, everything is just fantastic. And so tell me what your dream day will be like. The friends around, the wood-burning stove going, you know, a glass of wine. Just, just the community, lots of friends, you know, I think that's my dream. Sounds cooking. great. Will you invite cooking. me round? Of course I will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Andrew? Ultimately, I mean, the ultimate dream would be to have an, a nice outdoor pursuits business going where we can do mountain biking, coast steer and abseiling and set all that sort of stuff up. It seems Andrew is starting to see beyond his mission to save Anona's family farm and to imagine a future for himself here in Pembrokeshire. But first, there's a stable block to turn into a home, including a new extension to create the master bedroom. This build is simpler than the cottages, and the couple hope it can come in on their budget of £60,000. They're breaking with convention, as they plan to have their main living area upstairs. To maximise space, they've opted for an open-plan kitchen and lounge. Downstairs will be the sleeping area, with three good-sized bedrooms and two bathrooms. But builder Tony's fears about old buildings are proved right with this one too. Once we stripped the slates, we found out that the whole A-frames, the whole roof structure was all rotten. We've had to strip it all off, order new timber. I think we must have lost four weeks there. Hopefully, we can catch up. Old buildings just throw things at you daily and you've just got to deal with them, assess them and get on with it. Andrew and Anona want the exposed beams to be a major feature in their home, but replacing all the timbers will add thousands to their spiralling budget, and the couple are feeling the pinch. We've had, like, about two bills a day this week. It's mm. been, like, madness, and um, all of a sudden all the bills are starting to come in, and, mm. um, you know, we've got to, got to pay them, really. So that's sort of a little bit of anxiety there, I suppose. With the holiday cottages still unfinished and major work underway on their home, the couple have more on their plate than ever. Just, just getting people together, getting you know, sourcing the materials and things, it's, it's, it's mammoth, you know. So I think we're doing the best way we know at the moment. So, because you know we haven't got the expertise in the building, so I think I think it's best for us to do it this way, really. Sometimes come off the phone, or you just. You sit down and you just think, why on earth am I doing this, or why, you know... Because before life was easy. We had a, such an easy life in London. And now we're just here, just... I don't know, we're just... Working, working, working. Work, work, work. For Anona, the decision to return home and do this project is largely to support her parents. I think, you know, it's definitely made my parents a lot happier, you know, being closer, 
Um, I think it's just, you know, having us just there, I think. It, it's a comfort to them. And, and, and for me as well, knowing that they're OK, I think. Well, it's nice to be that bit closer. Andrew's thinking about a family business of his own, running outdoor pursuits holidays with his brother Mark. Activity-wise, in, in the water and on the coast, North Pembrokeshire doesn't really offer a great deal at the moment. You know, what, what the coastal steering boards really is entering the water sort of at a safe place, getting together as a group, and then just um, just navigating the coast. You're just following the, the line of the coast. Um, sometimes you'll be in the water, getting washed about by the waves. Then you'll come to a point where you'll climb out, uh, you'll climb along the rocks a bit, and then you'll gradually sort of get a bit higher and higher, and you'll come to a jump, so you'll jump off the rocks into the water. It just sort of just freshens your day up, really, and makes you feel good. Over the next two weeks, Tony gives Andrew more reason to feel good, totally rebuilding the roof structure on their new home. And work on the holiday cottages is nearly finished, with the last plumbing and electrics going in. Double there. Double, two doubles over there. Kitchens are being installed, and carpets laid. Gosh, isn't it fantastic? <gasps> so look in here. <gasps> wow. How's that? How's that? The first holiday cottage is finally finished. Yeah. One down, so. two to go. Yeah. It's May, and work on their new home is just beginning, and it's a total building site. So how's the house coming on? Yeah, pretty good. And they've stripped off all the old roof, haven't they, completely? I'm intrigued to see this. <laughs> See where the money's been spent. This block work is going up really well. Yeah, yeah, it's starting. Dividing um, all the rooms up. Which yeah, is now good. the guys have finished upstairs. They'll probably uh, next week now. Hopefully, they'll start on the, the walls down here. And this is a sort of upside down house, isn't it? You've got your yeah. living room and kitchen upstairs. That's right. And all your bedrooms downstairs. Yeah, three bedrooms down here. Yeah. Should we go upstairs and have a look at this roof? Yeah, let's go. Wow, it looks great. Doesn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, they've done a fantastic job on it. Really good job. I mean, one of the scary yeah. things about taking off an old roof is you think, can you get the character back into it that it had before? Yeah, we were, we were sort of, um, you know, definite that we wanted to keep the character and the A-frames. Yeah. And the carpenters basically have just copied exactly the, uh, the same A-frames that were there before. Yeah. Now, the whole project, including the holiday cottages, cost you more money to the point mm. where you've, you've had to get a mortgage on this. Yeah. Has it cost you even more money now, knowing that you've had to replace all of this roof and do more to, to your house? Yeah, 10, 10 or 15 more props yeah. because of the roof and everything. It's bound to cost you more because of all yeah. this. I mean, it's, yes, it's been so well built, it looks fantastic, but it's yeah. a big job to replace the amount that you've replaced. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And actually, I was getting so excited about all the timber work in here. Yeah. I forgot about this window. That's yeah, brand new. Uh, we've put the new opening in the end there now. So uh, absolutely incredible. Yeah, and we've got the great views from here. I mean, across the uh, the mountains there. And so. You can see for 20, 30 miles, cows in the field. It's just. It is. Uh, it's stunning. An amazing view, I must say. I'm quite jealous. Despite having a great big building project next door. Andrew and Anona are hoping to start letting the cottages out soon. But what's left to do before you can actually start letting these places out? Just the landscaping, yeah. really. So we're just uh, getting this area cleared out here now. Uh, a bit of decking and some gravel and then mm. some pots and plants and mm. things, really. I don't think they should have too much trouble marketing the cottages. They're lovely buildings and they've got a unique selling point right on their doorstep. Now, what about the farm? I mean, these holiday cottages are so uniquely mm. positioned. Yeah. Or are you going to use the farm to sort of, I don't know, tempt families to come here with their kids to see the animals and things like that? Yeah, I think so. I yeah, mean, well, they they've do. got cattle and yeah. sheep and kittens and all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah. uh, so hopefully it'll yeah, be it a big part of yeah. what, what we want to do, really. Yeah. I can, I can yeah. see Glyn being yeah. absolutely perfect yeah, to show so. kids around. Yeah. Of our farm life. A guided tours by yeah. Glyn. Yeah. <laughs> <I think>, uh, <laughs> Little stories and yeah. yes, when he was little and enjoy things. that. So. I think one of the max of, yeah. of running a, 
a holiday letting business like yeah. what you've got is what so, makes you different yeah. to other businesses yeah. like that. You're not just a little B and B, you're not just a little holiday let business. No. But a beautiful location and attractions on their doorstep aren't enough. <laughs> To get the highest income, Andrew and Anona are aiming at the luxury end of the market. They call in a local lettings agency. It's really nice. It's come up nicely, isn't it? After all their hard work and extra expenditure, it's time to see how much money their holiday cottages can bring in. I think that it's looking, you know, really close to grade five. Yeah, yeah. So um, what we've done is we've given you a provisional price yeah, code yeah. now which is £625 in the high mm. season. Mm. And the, that's for the small, this particular cottage. And then I is going to be 735 But that's what we would suggest, is you put them in at that price for this year. Mm. See how they go across the height of the season. See how you feel about it. Bye! 29th is going to be um, the deadline, so we really need to get that, get it all ready by then. It is a bit of a nerve-wracking time. If the couple hit their deadline, the cottagers can pull in over £1,300 per week, allowing Anona's parents the chance to relax in the knowledge there's money coming in. So I think they're pleased we've come back and we've, and we've put something more into the farm to make it sort of a viable sort of business in the future. Um, I think the important thing is as well for Glyn and Esther is to, is to keep the farm in the family and, and keep, keep the land and everything else. So hopefully in the future we can make a good business here to support ourselves and also um, Glyn and Nesta when they get a bit older. The 29th of July deadline for letting the cottagers gives the builders just eight weeks to finish the couple's home. And that leaves Andrew to do acres of landscaping. Meanwhile, Anona does her bit inside. Yeah, I love all this uh, finishing touches bit, you know, because I couldn't do all the building work, you know, and, yeah, this, this is my forte, I think. In their haste to finish, nerves are frayed. This is fucking stupid. How's the point of putting all this bloody thing on? Does it come off? And up against it, the whole family muck in. It's a hive of activity. Workers racing ahead to get the holiday cottages ready for paying customers and Andrew and Anona's new home finished. I'm really impressed with the workmanship and professionalism of the building team, but the pressure is now on Andrew and Anona. Their deadline is just six weeks away and they've got to make sure the builders completely finish and leave site before the first guests arrive. It's now nine months since Andrew and Anona set out on their mission to save her family farm. In that time, they've bravely attempted to transform a derelict milking parlour and stables into two holiday cottages and a magnificent new home for themselves. It's two months since I was last here, and from the outside, it appears they've done it. Morning. Hi. How are you? Come in. Are you well? Good to Hi, see you. you. How's things? Fairly well. Hi, How are you? How are you doing? Alright. Good. Wow. Look at this. Yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. It's isn't changed it? a bit. Yeah. Yes. So this is our bedroom here. Wow. Yeah. Oh, what a fantastic space. So what you don't realise is this is a new extension, yeah. isn't it? Mm. You've really respected the old building. I mean, you just look here, this is the sort of the old plaster finish in the building and the beautiful old stonework which you've mm. cleaned up. It looks absolutely fantastic. And then this, this used to be the outside wall of the building before you knocked through this hole. Yeah. And everything that you've done new just looks as beautiful as the old stuff. It's absolutely fantastic. The transformation is incredible but it's their living space I'm looking forward to seeing. I remember only last year mucking it out with Andrew. Fantastic, isn't it? It's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Well, yeah, we're pleased with this. Yeah, we? we really, really oh, are. I'm absolutely mm. gobsmacked. It's obvious Andrew and Anona have gone for top end finishers.
And this window is brand new. Yeah, yeah. This, this is all new, this opening mm. here, yeah. You'd never be able to tell that mm. because no. it's been so beautifully built with all the mm. brick detailing over the top. I think what works here for me more than anything is to breathe fresh air into the whole place, mm. but it still feels like it's part of the farm. Mm. Yeah. It's the yeah. living, yeah. breathing, working farm yeah. Yeah. that you always wanted it to be. Yeah. The couple now have their dream home, but it's the two holiday cottages that they hope will secure the farm's future. Yeah. And what about the new business then? This holiday left business. How's it gone through August? Oh, it's gone really, really well. Actually, it's been full. Both, yeah. full. both, got, full both cottages yeah. been full, yeah. And people have really enjoyed. Well, they've told us they've really yeah. enjoyed staying, so... Uh... The first thing we do is read the visitors' book. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they leave on a Saturday morning, and yeah. the, the comments in there just yeah. we couldn't ask for better. But everywhere you've just continued the same care mm. to all the detailing. Nice finishes, exposed stone. It's fab, isn't it? The traditional wood-burning stove dominates this impressive kitchen and living area. But just one thing still puzzles me. You still haven't quite sorted out how you get up to that metanine, though, have you? No, that's just storage for now. So yeah. <laughs> eventually, we, we probably will, but, I mean, there's no rush for it, so yeah. it's fine. In pursuit of the luxury end of the market, both stone cottages have been finished to the highest standards. But refusing to compromise on quality has come at a price. Well, we were looking um, initially about 160,000. Now you did have to go back and get a mortgage of 60 grand. Yeah, we on top of that 160. Yeah, we got a mortgage of um, of 60, mm. and then um, another loan on top of that uh, to make it up to 80. So. 80 grand more than you wanted to spend, yeah. is that and it? Then, and then plus, well, our wages, our wages yeah. over the last year, really, mm. have all gone into it as well. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, I think... So what was the final, final bill to get the two holiday cottages and the house completely done? We're well, probably looking around the 260 yeah. mark, yeah. About 260,000. Yeah. 260,000. But that's £100,000 more than you wanted to spend. It is. Yeah. But, but we've got two fantastic cottages, a business, yeah. and uh, our dream home. Yeah. And mm. we've got all that for £80,000 worth of debt. Andrew and Anona want the income from the cottages to benefit the whole family, so they're taking care of the £80,000 mortgage. For a young working couple, this is easily manageable. And with the farm's future made secure by the lettings business and their daughter back at home, they're giving Anona's parents a new lease of life. Oh, it's, it's um, far more reassuring you know, that, she's, that they are here, so the farm is going to be kept in the family. If you know the next next year and so, uh, we can help out a bit more with, with things, you know, the, the jobs that need doing and, and bits and pieces when we're not so focused on all the building work. I, I know I feel quite proud, you know, to be able to do, you know, to have this opportunity to do this, you know, and it's really nice, nice being home with Mum and Dad and... Um, it's been just all of us together, really. It is. Mm. Oh well, we're 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 quite complete now. The four of us, hope we'll be very happy together here. Yes. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I need> it. <laughs> this is an amazing, heartwarming story. Andrew and Anona returned to Wales to save the family farm. Now, to do this, they gave up so much, but it's all been worth it. They now have their dream home, a profitable business, and the farm will stay in the family for generations to come. Next time, Frank and Alice move to the mountain wilderness of Croatia. We want to live amongst the nature. I feel like we belong there. But turning this ruin into a home isn't easy. It's, it's so much to do. Wow, 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 wow,